we may just casually say that you know 200 or 300 people died in the pandemic because of covid but it is when you are present in that very moment and you see that one person dying in front of you you realize you know, the value of a life you know which uh, the news channels casually uh, you know represent just as one three digit or a four digit number for that matter Well, I'm just preparing to go to the US in some time. So I'll be joining Johns Hopkins in July, and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, man, crazy. I mean, Johns Hopkins. It's Johns Hopkins. Uh, John Johns Hopkins. Hopkins yes. Johns Hopkins. Amazing, man. I mean, it's it's so like uh, it's the currently the world's first like the top most university yes. for medical professions, right? Correct. Yeah, and it's masters you're going for. Yes, yes, right? that is correct. So you're currently like you've. Graduated from MBBS, uh, uh, like with an MBBS degree last year, and you're currently a practicing doctor, yeah. and then you're going for a B, your oh, masters. Yeah, no? perfect, man. And like, I've I've known you since a few years now, and like, not just from the field of medical, but I've known you. In fact, when we met, we met through some youth initiatives, right? right. And yeah. uh, you've been involved in so many different things. Uh, and this podcast is like, I'll just brief you about the uh, idea about this podcast that. The kind of guests which I want are the kind of guests who can bring relevant stories to the youth, and why so? Because I mean, hum as young people, so stay kids are rather data hai, Elon Musk hai. We take them as role models, but we are not able to relate with their journeys, right? Mm-hmm. So this podcast is meant for people uh, with whom, like, who can relate with you and your journey, and they can say that after this pod, watching this podcast, okay, maybe even I can do this, right? Because We're from uh, we're from Baroda, small yeah. like uh, small town. And you're from uh, Jam Khambalia, from Khambalia, right? Yeah. So like these are in the metropolitan cities, and uh, I feel that uh, there are a lot of young people who are there who have aspirations but who don't have real people to look up to. Uh, just the other day we had a pilot here, and she was telling me that how important is it it is to have a perspective of someone, like perspective that okay even this is this can be a reality for me. So thanks for coming on this show. Thank and you so much. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, same here, man. And uh, it's just that it's so sad that you're going to US anyway. In anyway, it's been a while we haven't met, and जब अभी time मिल रहा है तभी you're leaving. <laughs> oh God, yeah. But anyway, so like, uh, can you tell me a bit more about like, have you always wanted to be a doctor, or have you always wanted to be in the like medical industry since the school years? Right. Okay. This this is interesting. So to be honest, I never had a very firm goal of coming to coming into the field of medicine. But yes. how it all started was my love and passion purely for sciences i was always very keen about science in general even in school time so that was something which uh, medicine was i guess just a by product of that entire uh, love for uh, science in general like i can say back in the school there was a time i wa- i wanted to be a civil engineer or a mathematician and things like that so my interests have been varying ever since school just like any other kid i guess and the indian system i believe you know does not give enough opportunity to students to explore their various interests before coming to a conclusion of okay this is something we want to do for the rest of our lives so yeah like the new education policy still is trying to do that but i i don't think so that it's still there yeah, because exactly. i guess when we were in schools and like uh, It was only science, commerce, maths, and science. Maybe bio, PC, and these yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, so definitely that restricts the thought process of a person and maybe the realities which are exposed to them. Right? Mm-hmm. But so then, like, why did you choose? Like, you were overall curious uh, mm-hmm. about the world, right? How yes, everything works. That, yeah. Yes. So then, like, what made you choose biology, or what made you choose this path? Right. Okay. So I. Uh, this, this is something one of my cousins. told me and that really ignited a thought process in my head i can say uh, so he tried to connect uh, medicine as a form of human engineering wherein we are trying it's a riddle a human body is a riddle i can say and we are trying to solve it we we are just scratching the surface i can say in that sense and we are trying to solve this riddle and trying to learn more about medicine the human body how it works and that's just brilliant you know that it's phenomenal in the way it is and that is something which truly inspires me and makes me you know and i'm glad to have be having this opportunity to learn more about this field so your your cousin introduced you to this 
um, concept of human engineering while you were exactly. in school and then you were much more interested in you took biology yeah that is correct yeah okay and then but like i've seen that you've been engaged in a lot of other activities also so like hmm. do you think that all the other things which you do and all the other interests which you have are also somewhat helping you in this journey of um, creating a significant change in the medical history what right. do you think okay so how i see it is uh, is that you know a doctor connecting to a patient is the first point of contact in the medical industry but the industry in general is very big and you know it, the doctor patient relationship is just one small part of the big picture so i guess involving into management roles during my college time taking up leadership roles truly taught me to look at the bigger picture like during the pandemic we realized how the decisions at the managerial level affected the healthcare system of an entire country as a whole mm -hmm. so Definitely. these are the things the like participating in extracurricular activities in leadership roles during my medical school i guess gave me a different lens and opportunity to see the things with a different lens and that is something i guess uh, teaches uh, teaches a person to uh, to look at the bigger picture mm. this makes a lot of sense because you know what i can relate this to So like the, how our parents um, involve us in different activities in our school, yeah. right? So like I see that all those like, activities we're involved in more than the activities and the skills which we learn in those activities. It's the implicit um, implicit skill sets which we learn. For example, when we're like put into football classes, right? More than how to kick a ball, we're learning how like the our obviously teamwork, yeah. teamwork, handout, or coordination. what to think in stressful situations but these are the things which we usually miss out on yeah. such occasion then i guess i guess what you're um, mentioning about extracurricular uh, curricular activities is i guess quite related to that where it helps you form a perspective of how to apply such things in the medical world right true exactly in fact uh, so anyone watching this like um, john like being admitted to john hopkins is is in, like is in itself a dream and a like life goal for people but apart from that also sne we i myself have been introduced to sne on a different occasion than medicine i never yes. even knew uh, you that you were into like you were an mbbs yeah, yeah, yeah. an mbbs student and studying medicine because i mean for me what the reality of mbbs students are that they'll be only studying uh, all medicine the time, yeah. all the time and they won't have time for anything so this is also an example for people that it's upon you how you handle all those things together yeah, exactly. and the way we met was through tedx event which you were you you initiated right yeah. this was the first tedx tedx in our city vadodara exactly yeah right and you, in fact you already created history by doing that just <laughs> today there was someone coming on our podcast and she was telling me about the vadodara ms university podcast and our podcast uh, tedx tedx uh, and uh, it's already now it's a legacy that you like your legacy that is going to continue year by year so oh, that's yeah, amazing yeah. man <laughs> And doing all that while you were in NTBS, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. Really amazing. So, like, how do you think, like, a person in currently studying in NTBS should approach all these other things apart from medicine? Right. So, I, I, I guess you know, when you're in college, that is the only time when we, a person, has the opportunity to look at things beyond your studies. We see engineering students doing this all the time. They are involving themselves into different, into learning different skills. Uh, engaging in different activities, and I guess it's high time. And the and engaging in all these activities is something which gives these students, you know, a different view, a perspective about this world and how things work. And I guess it's high time that medical fraternity or even medical students, particularly, should also involve in all of this uh, by dividing their time in a way which fits the curriculum as well as uh, you know gives them some time for all these activities and. Uh, yeah, it can truly help them enhance their personalities, and uh, yeah, so that that's something I strongly felt after going through all of this. Definitely, and these days there are so many even diverse courses. Like even like I've uh, I've got a friend like who's gonna come on the podcast. He's currently studying um, medical ethics. Uh, right from yeah. Harvard, Harvard Medical. Harvard Medical. He, yeah, he's doing. You know him? Yeah. 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 So uh, so like uh, and like he's. promoting gender uh, gender uh, equality yeah. and yeah all these things so a biggest like he at in this era like the opportunities are countless it's upon uh, you how you uh, create opportunities for yourself true i guess right 
and um, can you can you tell me a bit more about this thing how you balance all of the things which you did along with the rigorous medical curriculum I am not sure if I balanced it well, but I guess it was it was just ended well. <laughs> you know, tell me because uh, you recently even got the like medical license for you the uh, the second stage of the medical license. Yeah, US, right? and exactly. I guess you got one of the highest scores. So don't like <laughs> don't, don't tell me that you didn't really do good. Oh God, yeah. So how did you how did you focus your studies and all these things along with creating value in such organizational positions? right so it's a difficult question actually because i don't think i have you know one stop solution that i use particularly which helped me do this but i i guess uh, you know when we start from the point we start our day till we end it we have certain decisions that we make for ourselves and these decisions are the ones which shape us as human beings you know and so i guess we often don't realize the concept of time management and we feel that we have a lot on our plate already like studies for example and you know we refrain from making time for other things but if we try to you know narrow down or you know like try to actually evaluate how we spend time we can realize okay we have a lot of time in which we can you know do a lot of other things and uh, so i guess that is one thing and the other can be to stay away from procrastination as much as possible when it comes to leadership roles or just opportunities in general so what did you think like for you what was the thing like how did you keep yourself away from procrastination so i i'll just give an example so uh, how the idea of organizing tedx came to me was but was when i went to a friend of mine for a presentation i wanted to share about my idea of vertical farming and he just out of the blue said that why don't you give a ted talk when probably he was not aware of it either <laughs> okay. it was this random flu uh-huh. and i looked it up so you know that idea of looking it up i wanted to know how it works action, what it is like taking action Ex- on the exactly, thoughts exactly yeah and i realized you know how we could just uh, fill up a form and you know uh, give an interview and apply for the tedx license to organize a tedx event in your university and you know i did it so you know these are i guess a lot of people who have you know i won't say i made it big or, but people who actually uh, have made it big are the ones who take actions when others may refrain or you know not do it at all this For is example. this is so important you know and this is so important as well as powerful uh, because um, you know i'll talk about the pro- procrastination part and like uh, i see that these two things are quite connected because young people we tend to think of time management as a concept instead right. of a way of life because i mean you if you're passionate about something you won't have to really manage Make yourself efforts to exactly right yeah. so like i guess you were really passionate about um your own engagements your own like medicine or maybe um uh, organizing a tedx or maybe just exploring what's there right. on there yeah. like yeah. on the plate right so all these things allowed you to take action irrespective of someone telling you or not Exactly. and i believe in school what happens is that um like we are so used to the system of um like teachers telling us or pushing us for different different like our assignments or maybe group projects or maybe tests that where um we carry yeah, forward exactly. that in our life as well yeah and when we carry forward that in our, in our life we're waiting that someone else would take some action on our hands exactly, exactly yeah. and i guess someone you, would give us an opportunity on a platter for it exactly but i guess that thing which is said ki dost ne aapko bataya ki okay why don't you try this out and you actually going out there and searching what can be done about this is not waiting for someone else to take action exactly. right so you yeah. took that first step and i believe that's so important and so the power of taking action It's yeah. it's really important for youth to take action on things when they're introduced to them, and right. I believe when you don't do that, that's when opportunities are missed, and that's when you say that I'm not lucky and someone else is lucky, and it's not luck, it's you taking, taking action, action on those opportunities. Taking an action, yeah. Yeah, so that's really interesting, and that's really inspiring, uh, Sne. And right. I believe people think that it's just luck or it's just that they're gifted with it. I don't think so. That anyone is obviously like I mean, some people have in some like high intellectual capabilities or anything of that sort. But at the end, what matters is the person taking action. Action or not? Or not yeah. Right. That's so amazing, man. I mean, I remember you sharing with me about how you took an action during the time of pandemic when uh, the sanitizer <laughs> wasn't working out for you or it was causing problems to you and. So it was exactly it personifies this idea as well you know how if you would like to share more about it yeah so just to give a context 
about this thing so like uh, during the pandemic i have asthma and because of asthma like uh, i was not able to use alcoholic sanitizers because mm-hmm. i was allergic uh, to mm-hmm. alcohol right, right so jab bhi i would like like apply it on my hands and maybe bring my hands near to my nose i would get an asthma attack or something of that sort because of that i realized this could be a, such a huge issue for so many th- people not just me and not just a health issue a lot of other people yeah. are not able to even like uh, use sanitizers because of religious issues or their own personal preferences mm-hmm. so why not like think upon this and create some solution for this action mm-hmm. so we like i researched some scientists to <coughs> uh, like take an action on this where uh, we developed a nanotechnology based sanitizer which didn't have alcohol so at right. the end yeah. like Uh, like long story short, we got this product out in the market, and it's still in the market, uh, and it's we named it Allsafe, Allsafe dot com. But then, like one interesting thing which I would like to bring to no- notice, and in this is this is no way in, uh, a flex in any way, because I was not, I never studied uh, sciences. I right. have never, I not even in eleventh and twelfth I studied science. But I realized that to create an impact, to create a uh, like to make an action, it's not really necessary for you to know everything. Mm-hmm. It's just necessary for you to know, like the first step. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And when you take the first step, it's as about the next. It will start automatically. Yeah, the yeah. next fits in. I mean, exactly. that's done. And then I just contacted scientists, and then things went on 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 right. their own because obviously yeah. people were there. They had it was a win-win for all of us. But anyway, we need to talk about you. Can you tell me a bit more about your startup? So, like, uh, apart from medicine, also you've been involved in. Uh, you started up your own venture with for which you even even got a funding, right? Yeah. So I wanted to know about that uh, right. experience okay. of yours. So uh, we got a chance to participate in this event known as Young India Challenge. It was it is conducted by IIT Delhi each year, at least in the pre-pandemic era. And the idea was to come up with a sustainable startup idea. something which helps the environment as well as is a profitable can be a profitable venture so we presented the idea of starting a sustainable tourism business which involves renting clothes so just think about it uh, anybody who is traveling from one country to india for example for a, a trip a long trip the main uh, fuel cost in the, in the airline would be that of the luggage the clothing for example and we were trying to hit that point we were trying to reduce the amount of cargo transported purely for tra- tourist trip pur- tourist purposes and that's when we thought of why not we can start something which is affiliated with the airport or is within the airport and it can allow people to rent clothing from that point onwards carry it throughout the trip and get it back when they go back to the country from the airport itself interesting so it's so sustainable it's saving cost it's very yeah. for everyone so that was something for which we received a funding initially a seed funding and we tried to uh, you know expand it in uh, different places i won't say we initially succeeded in it but yeah it was a very interesting and a very fruitful process for me to learn more about how the business works in that case wow and this was during your mba studies yeah this was during the final year of my medicine so yeah. seriously yeah. how did so so during this how did you like actually how did you because last final year is the like I one of the one of the yeah. toughest right correct yeah, yeah so how did you actually take out time i mean i realized that you said you said that if you passionate about uh some things then you right, obviously yeah. take down but i heard that in the final year of medical people anyhow study 10 hours a day 12 exactly. hours a day 11 hours a day so how did you manage all of this between that so i had to sometimes fit in even so in a way which could you know balance with my curriculum as well uh, there have been times when it didn't work out and like i would have booked flight tickets to a place and suddenly i had an exam coming up and i had to just let it go yeah. so there have been moments like these but i always try to uh, balance my studies in whatever capacity i could while i got involved myself with all these activities and uh, to be honest all of uh, participating in all these events never felt like i was making effort to do it you know it just so came naturally to me yeah, it, it just came naturally and mm. that didn't make me feel like you know oh it's very tough and i'm finding it difficult to manage i just had to find a way how to do it you know there was no question of why i am doing it mm. wow that's yeah. really insane because here i realized the potential and the power that the reason the purpose why we do yeah. something holds and exactly. if you love you're in love with that 
you're you're not gonna like be distracted by the pain points which are coming on the way. On the way, it's just gonna be a hurdle. I mean, which you're gonna pass anyhow, and you won't see that. अच्छा हम कितनी बार गिर रहे हैं फिर कितनी बार. Yeah, it's it's really inspiring to see a lot of startup store startup stories wherein uh, the question is not why I want to spend 15 hours a day working. For example, the question is how to do it, and that's it. There's no. Huh. Because the why is already set sorted. Yeah. Sorted, the why yeah. is already sorted. Yeah. So when a purpose is so strong, I guess you know it's easy to move forward without having doubts about your. Wow. Yeah. This is this is really powerful and. Uh, that's actually that actually sums up that whole thing about procrastination also a Lo- lot of people think ki kya procrastination kaise khatam kare procrastination pure din hum baithe rehte scroll karte rehte but i guess the re- like the way out of this is finding a why why yeah. for you right why? but you know what's ne i mean i believe like we're quite privileged that okay we might i mean obviously there are things which we're going to explore but we still have an idea of our why what excites us So, what do you think about the people who haven't found that why as of yet? So, say, what do you think? Like, for those who are not really um, like sure of their key guy, their why, then right. What would you suggest them? What can they do to find a? Okay, so this is interesting. I I don't think there's a one single answer to this question, but what I can definitely suggest is uh, that people can keep trying different things. before they can come to a conclusion and it there's never any particular age or stage at which mm-hmm. uh, you can come up come up with your why there are people who who explore their why in their 40s or 50s and i guess it's it's okay to tell people there's a, this man from anand so mr anand from bangalore is a really uh, interesting figure because right. i mean he quit his job at age 40 45 and he started his own like movement of building artificial lakes right. all over bangalore So I mean, he found his key guy on forty. I mean, what's stopping right. you? You're just twenty, twenty one, twenty five, thirty. I mean, I guess you've got a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it might not be that. Like you might not really uh, synergize. Like listening, like hearing this from two young people. But take it from us. I mean, yeah. we've had a lot of uh, experiences of people. who are there in their 30s 40s 50s and you can find such stories anywhere who are changing their careers and still they're happy in their lives and they're making it big as well yeah, yeah. and in fact all the best things which have happened to me have happened because i dared to try something, something new. new exactly, exactly. <laughs> right <laughs> jinx <laughs> so that that's really interesting um uh, snay and like i'm really happy for you that you found your ikiga guy so in, in such a like young age and you're pursuing it and being consistent at it what right. do you think how how does consistency play a role in this right so uh, i i guess consistency always comes with finding your bigger purpose you know when you somehow know where you want to reach then you have that inner sense of restlessness wherein you just can't sit before you have truly achieved your passion or your goal you've reached your end goal so i get i guess having a bigger picture in head you know can be very important at times and once you have it i don't think you need a reason you don't need to find a reason to be consistent you're just doing it regardless doing it, yeah. yeah and that's really interesting with what you said ki yeah, there is this restlessness jab tak tumhe wo nahi hota and i guess a lot of young people have that restlessness i mm-hmm. myself have that right now and i believe rather than being afraid of it or being embarrassed or being Like worried about it. I guess we should be. We should embrace it. We should yeah, embrace yeah. it and yeah. like work on exploring stuff so that we're yeah. one step closer to who we actually are. What yeah. for? What we're meant to be. Yeah. Right? That's really inspiring, man. I mean, amazing. And so, like, can you tell me a bit more about your scientific researches? I mean, that's really uh, like I was going through what all you've done, and yeah. I came across this like period of your time when you did scientific researches. And, and after that, can you even tell me mo- a bit more about your work in the pandemic? Okay, yeah. So I have been involved with a couple of scientific projects, but one uh, project that I would truly like to share about is, is something slightly personal to me. So uh, I, I, I guess I was in the first year of my medical school when my grandfather he attempted suicide, and he did it by uh, consuming uh, consuming the toilet cleaner in in my house. so that was something which truly moved me as a person and i was posted in my medicine wards as an intern when i also saw similar cases of uh, people who had come up with suicidal organophosphate poisoning which is the 
uh, insecticide or the pesticide which is normally used by the farmers in India. And uh, according to the WHO statistics, there are over a million deaths each year because of suicidal poisoning in India. And that is a very big number. Now, uh, because, this, uh, because this ailment affects a certain class of society, I, I believe, I realized that there was not enough done on this. So my attempt was a very small, I guess, like a, like a very small research, if I may say so, but we tried to study 50 patients in total who had come up with suicidal poisoning in that case. And we tried to uh, you know, identify the bio mark, uh, biochemical markers affiliated with the event and all of that just to come un un better, uh, get a better understanding of the problem. But uh, that was something which was truly close to me. We are yet to publish the research, but uh, that is something you know which was truly personal to me. And we, I'm glad that I could continue that project in my hospital. It's really fascinating to see how you can actually impact lives through research because I'm pretty sure that once this is published, when this is available to a lot of people, I mean, a lot of scientific uh, researchers or maybe people who are taking action will be able to get a better insight on all these things, right? Yeah, and definitely, definitely you as an advocate can obviously uh, take this forward as a medical professional as well, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, what, what, like, can you share a like, few experiences of your like pandemic medical journey? Yeah, okay. So I started my internship uh, during exactly around the time when the pandemic started. It actually was the last, like after your final year, you final year of medicine. Internship is a one year period wherein you try to uh, you get to work in different departments of the hospital. And uh, so my internship started in March of 2020, 2020, yes. And that was also the time when India nearly had its first wave of COVID. And uh, because that was just the beginning of the pandemic nobody had any clue okay. about what treatments to give and so there was a phase with just in my first week of uh, posting that i was witnessing so many deaths every single day and that was deeply uh, moving at least to me to witness so many deaths happening within the very first week of that pandemic that i i, I could i could be a part of and that was when i started blog, writing daily blogs about my experience I used to share the patient stories or the experiences I had during that time, and it was a tough phase. Like today, we may uh, we may we may just casually say that you know, two hundred or three hundred people died in the pandemic because of COVID. But it is when you are present in that very moment and you see that one person dying in front of you, you realize you know, the value of a life. You know, which uh, the news channels casually uh, you know represent just as one a three digit or a four digit number for that matter i'm getting i'm getting goosebumps when i'm when i'm thinking of this because you know we as citizens we're not really close to that reality which yeah. doctors are subjected to and when, while you're speaking it i can like uh, feel your emotions while you're seeing that that अपने सामने किसी को बेड पे तड़पते हुए देखना या फिर किसी को ऐसा देखना कि ओके दे लाइक दे नो दैट लूजिंग लाइफ इन फ्रंट ऑफ दे लूजिंग लाइफ इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू इट माइट बी रियली ट्रॉमेटाइजिंग राइट सो एज अ स्टूडेंट हाउ डिड यू डील विद ऑल दैट माय वे ऑफ डीलिंग विद इट वाज डेफिनेटली जर्नलिंग और राइटिंग अबाउट माय एक्सपीरियंस एंड I I never realized that you know what I was writing was also a lot lot of people were able to relate to it I guess it was even uh, they published in New York, New York Times, Times right? yeah. So th there used to be a phase where, when you know I used to blog daily about it, and just out of the blue, somebody from the NYT reached out to me to submit a story regarding the pandemic and my experience back in India. And that was when one of my experiences of working in the COVID ICU was published in the New York Times. And uh, like even today, when I think about it, I I have chills, you know. Thinking, I, I can literally imagine the people who lost lives in front of me, and uh, the med scientific community couldn't do a lot about regarding treating that disease, and especially even like during the this. I know, किसी ने pandemic को ऐसा ऐसे सोच के नहीं like expect कुछ नहीं किया था एकदम से आ गया ऐसा like no one was prepared. So medical professionals के लिए भी it would happen a nightmare, right? Yeah, exactly. And I guess in in the middle of it, there were a lot of I mean. Um, Fires and blasts and all these as well. So like, in the hospital, yeah, and it was all during. I guess even that was that was also like the major fires were also caused by a lot of the ventilators. Ventilators, right? Yeah. So like, was there any specific reason for all that happening 
during uh i i won't say uh, any specific reason but uh that like 2020 uh, mid 2020 was a period when uh, the government so the hospitals were realizing how uh, there was a very huge gap in the demand and supply of the ventilators at least so a lot of companies were given uh, the, like you know given the copyrights or you know the trademarks of uh, making ventilators as and when possible but that also possibly led to a slightly lower quality machines which uh-huh. may could have been the reason why this happened in the first place and to my surprise a lot of hospitals uh, experience this similar issue about fires in the ventilator okay and while we're talking about how public development uh, public uh, Uh, medicine and like uh, public health plays a role in our daily life and how like medical fraternity is dealing with all of this you even mentioned me like and mentioned about your interest in public health and policy so yeah. can you even like share some insights about what you're planning to do and like how how is your interest in clinician towards that right or any projects which you take took about work which you did yeah okay so uh, let, let me share about you know how Pub, the field of public health can be important you know in ways we don't realize at times so recently bill gates uh, gave a ted talk and he shared about how the roman empire combated great fires massive fires by establishing a foolproof fire fighting team for example back in that era in in, in second century bc i guess and uh, so the concept of you know having a full fledged team of firefighters was something that helped them in that era to combat fires and he came up with the idea that the world at a world level we need to have a team of such a uh, uh, interdisciplinary team involving clinicians researchers scientists and you know public health professionals who come together and who are like a team purely to uh, you know tackle pandemics before they even take place mm. right before they even materialize for that matter so that is something I, i guess you know the field of public health can play a pivotal role in managing such uh, you know great uh, pandemics before they even happen at all but then like while we're talking about this while while we're talking about changing action and while we're talking about young people cha- uh, like taking action i want to understand and take your perspective on this ki medical field is quite a professional field where you need a lot of experience right, right. so when we're talking about, about public health how can young people have an impact in this industry how like how they can affect lives and i understand that like being there contributing uh, being a part of the icu is a major thing but like people might have a realistic or unrealistic expectations ki theek hai main medical mein jaunga and then i'll do researches and i'll get involved in such teams and work right. with such people so like how possible is it and how um, if not approachable how realistic is it for some young people to in- get involved in such a scale on on such a scale on such a, such projects and such things right okay so uh, here we can talk about you know how laymen in particular can play a role in you know improving the healthcare of the society in general like during the pandemic we saw how uh, different people came together to raise awareness uh, uh, to raise awareness about the disease for example helping in distribution of medicines collecting unused medicines so these are just small little examples of how community involvement can help improve the health of society in general mm-hmm. so that is one thing and, and secondly when it comes to uh, practicing doctors who are just starting out for example uh, they can probably they probably need to look at doctors for that they probably yeah they probably need to look at the healthcare from a bigger picture you know uh, tackling the doctor patient like you know tackling the patient problems is one aspect of you know what we uh, of the healthcare industry and i guess uh, you know trying to understand the disease in general would be so, uh, like you know the society in general would really help them be better clinicians and uh, improve the so- health of the society all right makes sense yeah so like you know, to just add a little more uh, example a little example to this like uh, The pandemic actually started or was detected in China in December, November to December of 2020, 2019 actually, and uh, so what happened exactly was that the uh, local healthcare officials of China realized that there there were in close to 20 to 30 cases of pneumonia of unknown origin, pneumonia of no identified organism, for example, right? And when 
they had just reached the number of 20 to 30 patients they were able to uh, you know get the red click you know catch the red flag and take action now just think about Indian healthcare system in that setting had there been just 30 cases I don't think any healthcare uh, you know uh, society of India would have been alerted so rapidly like towards the end of 2020 for example China had already uh, like you know multiple healthcare systems had already you know, uh, done the uh, DNA analysis or the genomic analysis of the virus and everything. So these are the things, I guess, you know, uh, these are the ways in which we can strengthen our healthcare system by creating proper alert systems uh, wherein we are able to detect diseases which often go unnoticed in the society or in the society. So, yeah, that is something, you know, we can improve particularly as a country, as a country. Exactly. Okay. So, and what do you think about bioethics? So, like they say, uh, if we're talking about China and like the way they ha handled the crisis, so like uh, just a random thought which occurred in my mind was bioethics ki kaise medical field ke andar, uh, ethics play a huge role. They say, like right. my father runs a pharmaceutical company and like I realized, I've seen how like policies are incorporated in manufacturing processes, how mm -hmm. they have to follow it by the T, but at the same time there are people and ways in which things can be surpassed and like yeah. get trickled down in, into the system. So what do you think about like ethics in medicine? Right, okay. So uh, at least the pandemic made us realize that the ethics in medicine operate on two different fronts. First is the patient front wherein, you know, if I am patient, I have the right to decide that, you know, at least the treatment plan or participate in that for, for that matter. And the second is the society uh, in general. So for example, like if I'm a COVID patient and I decide, you know, I don't want to wear a mask or I don't want to isolate myself, it technically it can be a patient right, but uh, it, you know, conflicts with the interests of the society. Mm -hmm. So uh, as healthcare professionals, these is, this is the, there's a balance that we need to find, you know, uh, and that's when ethics come into picture, you know, ethics play a very important role in deciding how, what is in the interest of the society versus what is in the interest of the individual and yeah all of the thing is just surrounding this concept or this idea okay yeah. it makes a lot of sense ki isme fir actually baat sachne wali cheeze hai to yeah but anyway like we're talking about the whole journey and how you're making a change and what do you think about concepts I, for someone who's listening to this and who might be in their school it might look like a really overwhelming journey journey ki bahut lamba hai time period and you have to invest a lot of time I, I, and you've recently even applied for the US medical license right yeah so like can you tell me first of all even like why US medical license and what's your plan with that and secondly what can you suggest to some person some young person who is listening to this and who might be having second thoughts about this long journey of medical history, right. medical profession. Yeah, okay. So, I, I guess, you know, uh, uh, it has been mentioned in multiple books about this idea of the 10,000 hour rule. Like, uh, being an expert at something truly requires that level of dedication and, uh, you know, focused work. And medicine is something, as I mentioned earlier, we are just scratching the surface. We are, you know, still trying to know more about the human body and how it functions. So, definitely, it's as long as a PhD, but it requires this kind of effort in order to truly understand how to see a patient and how to deal with their problems or help them get better. And uh, I guess, you know, the long haul of this profession is the... Uh, yeah, is the dedication that one needs to give in order to understand the system better or the human body is better. And uh, why US? I, I can say that, you know, uh, at least as of now, that country has proven through its uh, research and healthcare how it can affect multiple lives across the globe. Like how, uh, like their action plan during the time of pandemic or their quick research in the field of vaccination. It just shows how quality research can affect lives not just within that country but globally and uh, what truly drove me to that country is you know that very idea of uh, getting an opportunity to involve with the first class the finest research possible and uh, yeah that is something I wanted to involve with and thereby also contribute to my home country India uh, by the kind of research that we can possibly do over there. So you're planning to come back, but like gain exposure, research, some research and gain a network yeah. and then come back to India and practice it here, is it so or no? 
possibly i'm, I'm uh, to be honest i'm still exploring my avenues in that in that field but yes if i get an opportunity to work in this country and to serve my country i would definitely take that i was, I was just thinking ki yaar people like you they go out apne country ka kya hoga but what do you think what's what's lacking in our system which like stops people from uh right doing i i guess there are uh, first of all there are the administrative factors and the political hierarchy which often comes into picture like the health ministers are not practicing physicians for example or you know people who take decisions for the hospitals are often not doctors and this limits the abilities of physicians to give their best or to be at their optimal performance secondly uh, i believe that since india has not truly adapted the technology the excellent technology that is available for patient management uh, a lot of doctors time goes into managing the paperwork for example and so i guess once we start working on all these factors little by little uh, introducing the electronic medical record system for example in india can be one small step towards getting a better healthcare system and so i guess you know learning this concepts from a country like us and bringing them back to india would be something uh, which can truly help our economy and healthcare system as well Right, definitely. I mean, talking to it seems so like even intimidating. कि कितना कुछ कर रखा है आपने ने. I mean, and still he is t- saying that he is just exploring. And it's this this has been an amazing conversation, Sne. And like so truly, much. I mean, I'm pretty sure that who whoever listens to this whole journey, they'll get a good perspective of how a person from a small town can actually make it to the best university of the world, best medical university of the world, and crack it in different fields, not just medical. Yeah. So thanks it's for lovely. coming on the show, man. I mean, it was amazing talking. always love you guys. Always to see you soon. Yeah, see you.